Hi, everyone, and welcome to Ask a Death Doula. My name is Suzanne O'Brien. Today, the topic is forgiveness will set you free. And I'm going to share with you examples of those at the end of life, how they used forgiveness and the difference, the complete difference that that had in having them have a positive end of life experience. So welcome. Today, again, we're gonna be talking about forgiveness. And in my opinion, forgiveness is the golden key to everything. It's the key to all of the healing, whether again, we're holding on to shame or guilt or anger or resentment, all of that, that's part of the human experience, forgiveness is the transformational tool. And I'm gonna give you some examples of how that works. And again, the things that I've seen with those at the end of life, which by the way, is the last moment in our journey that we have to absolutely come to a place of forgiveness and resolving past issues that have happened or not. And the difference that those can make and how we, you and I, can walk away today with using forgiveness in our world to make our life's journey that much more magical because it can be, and it is. So welcome. Okay, so first let's talk about the definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is not what it is and what it's not. Forgiveness is not condoning someone else's actions. It is not excusing someone's actions. We all are responsible and have to take responsibility, whether you like it or not, or whether you're conscious of it or not, the responsibility of your actions, you are held responsible for them. So let me give you an example. If somebody's living through this life unconsciously, where they are disconnected, where they are disassociated, where they are you know, in denial or acting out because maybe something again happened to them as a younger person and they're angry. And so they're acting in a way that is, you know, heavy, low vibrational, and they're hurting other people. No judgment, but we have to make observations. So let's just say that they're going in their life and they have like this, this kind of like trail of hurting people and doing things, maybe, you know, taking people's money or maybe lying to people and all of the above. Even though they're unconsciously living in that space, they're going to be held responsible for that. Trust me. So energy is all there is, and you are a magnet. And when you put whatever you put out will be matched. So it might not happen right away. It might not happen in a year. It will always have to be answered to always. And maybe again, they're going to be living in a life where they constantly are in struggle and unhappy and all of that. So, you know, everyone has to do their own work, but I want you to understand that everyone is going to be held responsible with no judgment, but responsible for the actions that we all take. And again, the non-judgment is very important because we've all done things that we're not happy for. It's part or not proud of because it's part of the human experience, right? And the biggest thing you can do is take ownership to ask for forgiveness, to look at where you were in your journey, because you were doing the best you could with where you were with what you had to work with. I promise you that. It always is. Where you were in your journey that you were making those choices. Were you running? Were you hurt? Were, were you not able to deal with certain things? Whatever it is, you were doing the best you could with where you were at the time with what you had to work with. This is across the board for everybody. Does it excuse things? Of course not. Does it explain things? Yes. And are we able to, with that higher perspective of looking at it with the lens, right? That higher perspective lens, when we're able to look at things, we can then heal them. We can then give them the ownership and the healing and the blessing to let them go. So forgiveness is your key, bar none, in this life's journey for transformation, for healing, for all of it. So it's not, again, excusing anyone's behavior. It's not condoning their behavior, but it's removing your energetic attachment to it. So if you think of, first of all, let's just, let's just share this. To be angry 
resentful, all of that takes so much energy. It takes so much energy from you. So if someone hurt you in the past for you to be holding on to that every day, right? Thinking about that's coming up, you're angry. They are just draining your energetic bank account. So when you forgive, it sets you free. It sets you free to not be drained by that and then to have your energy to be what you want it to be. So it's so incredibly important to understand that you're not excusing, it's removing that attachment to it. It also is for you. Forgiveness is for you, it's not for the other person. It's setting you free. It's allowing you to break those chains. And again, there's not one person in this world that does not have forgiveness to give. There's not one person in this world that's not does not have forgiveness to receive, usually many layers on many different topics. And there's no judgment here. It was all about opportunities to learn. So everyone is on their journey. So I think if we remember this, and again, this knowledge, this beautiful wisdom comes from many people at the end of life, where there are three phases to end of life, shock phase, stabilization phase, and transition phase. And it's in that stabilization phase, which I call the work phase and what I, why I call it the work phase is also where the magic is going to happen or not. I call it the work phase because this is where people will do a inventory, uh, look back on their lives, back on things that cause them pain, that are unresolved, that were joyful, all of it. You kind of do that timeline. And this is the moment in the stabilization phase where forgiveness is going to play a role and, be, and for those that, ha that have had a stabilization phase and also have been able to utilize this and have an opportunity to look back and to do the forgiveness, it is the most beautiful end of lives I've ever seen. So this forgiveness was that energetic shift that transformed their whole energy. Literally see people light up, remove those heavy weights, remove those blocks of anger. So when we're living in this life and things happen to us, especially as children, it's very traumatic, right? And so a lot of times, you know, your major identity comes from your parents, how they treat you, you know, the interactions there. That's how we create our, our worth and our value. And when our parents hurt us, and again, go back to everyone is doing the best they can with where they are in their journey with the tools that they have. Okay. So we have to come from that loving, non-judgmental, non-judgmental vibrational state, although it takes practice to get there, but we're looking from that bigger picture. When we're a child or when we're, you know, a victim or hurt by something, it's an energetic block that gets just, it's like frozen in time and gets stuck in there. And that's what we do to survive. So we, we take these things, these, these hurts, and we actually like freeze them and block them and kind of push them all the way down um, so that we can actually live our day. And a lot of times that's needed for survival at the time, because a lot of times, you know, we can't even process or handle what just happened, especially if you're a child and your parent hurt you gosh, you have to live in that house. You have to survive. You have to depend on them. And if you found that you can't for a child, how frightening that is. So there's just so much prevalence with child abuse on so many different levels. So we want to really look at this. Now, when we have those blocked spaces of unforgiveness, it's an energetic ball, right? That's, that's inside of us that if not processed, healed, released, will create pain, will create bad habits, will create patterns. So again, there's no judgment here, but the way for you to be free, the way for you to release is through forgiveness. And at the end of life, when they're in the stabilization phase, again, there's an organic thing that happens at the end of life where the physical body is declining and the spiritual body is growing. So there's this loving energy that organically is increasing as that spiritual body is growing that allows that safe space, 
that wisdom, that perspective that allows patients at the end of life to be able to now look at those painful experiences and what happened in their lives without it being as traumatic. But we also know that this is the moment. This person's gonna have their end of life and they're either going to be able to have that forgiveness be a part of it. And again, there might be people in the family, in their journey that they want to say, I am sorry for, or I forgive you for X, Y, and Z. Really powerful because that has a ripple effect. So what I wanna share with you is the power of forgiveness to utilize it now can set you free that you can have whatever you want moving forward from this point. You know, unforgiveness holds you hostage, keeps you hostage from your past experiences and keeps you a prisoner from being able to move forward in doing whatever you want. So forgiveness releases those energies brings you back to the control of your energy flow and then allows you to say, okay, what do I want to do now? Because I don't have the chains that bind me. I also want to share with you that unforgiveness is an actual medical diagnosis. Unforgiveness is an actual medical diagnosis. Now I worked with a lot of people with cancer and at the end of life, and there is a huge connection with anger, pain, guilt, unforgiveness, and illness and physical illness. So remember those blocks of energy that are stored, right? So every time we've had a traumatic, painful, or some kind of experience that we didn't process, it gets stuck, it get, it's in there, right? Whether it's in your energy field here or it's in your body. And that is going to always want to be healed. So it's going to want to get your attention. It's going to try and get your attention through pain. It's going to try and get your attention through um, just other things. It's going to say, hey, heal me. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm healed. And it's people have told me this verbatim that their cancer was directly caused by unforgiveness and things that they didn't heal, trauma that they've had that they didn't process. And I remember when I was in 2019, I was able to do 14 doula givers, volunteer trainings all over the country of Thailand. It was an incredible experience, changed my life. And I remember it, one of the temples that we worked in at the very end, it was a temple where people went when they had their end of life or very serious diagnosis of cancer, advanced cancer. And they had, they had a formula and a way that they practiced there that was incredible. And there were people, because I would sit in the group circles, that would say that this is the happiest they have ever been in their life, being in this temple. And here's what the formula was. So they took all the sugar out of the diet. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna lay it out there. They took all the sugar out of the diet and used a plant-based diet. Okay, right? That's so, you know, healing the body that way. They did meditation. They did movement. So they moved the body, the energy. And they did a forgiveness practice and they did a forgiveness practice. So people would come and they would write down what they want to be forgiven for or who they want to forgive something. Uh, they give forgiveness to for something. And they read that to the abbot who is the head of the temple or his um, trusted next person. And then they did a ceremony of burning it. So they got that out of them. And I have to tell you that I sat there with people with stage four cancer, young too, 30s, who said this temple and this community was the happiest they have been in their entire life. And they were facing their end of life. The happiest they have been in their entire life. And I'll tell you what that was about. It was about the freedom of forgiveness. It was about releasing the chains, getting out of prison, being now in a state of, again, joyful flow and alignment and connection, you and I, you and I can access this right here, right now. And I want to share with you anything and everything that I can as far as tools to do that, because it's a process. So it's not just that you're going to say, well, okay, I forgive him. That's not how this works. I wish it did. It doesn't. It takes work, right? So it takes a process to get in touch with things, to know that 
you want to always come from that non-judgmental space of perspective when you're going to look at these past experiences. Okay. So you're going to look at it from what was, what was this experience trying to teach me? What do I need? What is the gift within that experience? And, oh, and here, I'm going to go deep here. Thanking, thanking the person that hurt you, that gave you that experience, because it was an opportunity for you to have amazing acceleration in your soul growth. And again, it's not going to happen right away. It's going to take time. It's going to take years. It's going to take you to do your own work to get to that energetic, safe place, just like people at the end of life, right? Where their vibrations are raising and there comes an organic space in that end of life process, stabilization phase, where they can look back with a different perspective, with safety, with love, and be able to make sense of it. You have to do your own work and your journey, and it will take time that you can get to a place where you can then look back at that experience without it being so triggering and say, what was that about? What was there for me to learn? The person who hurt me, what was their journey like? Let me go a step further and look at that person's journey. Were they hurt? Because hurt people hurt people, right? That's just how it works. Where were they at in their journey that they were acting so callous and so cruel to other people because they were acting out because they were hurt? Were they doing the best they could with where they were at the time? And the answer is always going to be yes. It's not excusing them. It's not condoning it. But when you look at somebody who's just trying to survive, I'm not saying they're doing it the right way, and you can bless them and let them go, that's where you can find forgiveness for them. That's where you can change anger into empathy. And that changes everything. And that will set you free. We will talk more about forgiveness. We will give tools on exercises to learn how to forgive. What I want you to know today is that forgiveness is the single most transformative tool that you have in this life's journey. And forgiveness will set you free. I love you so very much. We are all on our journey. There is no judgment and it can be anything that you want it to be if you choose love you guys so very much this is suzanne o'brien this is ask a death doula forgiveness is the key to freedom thank you for being here everybody i will see you in the next episode